guys and welcome back to another requested tutorial video. Now today, we're going to be taking a look at how you can install Windows 2000 inside of a virtual machine or on a real computer. Now, this comes as a video request by Heath and Megafan Kid Tech. So I'd like to thank both of them for suggesting this build. Um, and yeah, so let's just get right into it. I'm going to have all the links you're going to need down below in the video description which is probably just going to be to the Windows 2000 ISO file. So, um, I am here, as you can see, in VMware Workstation 11 now. I have finally decided uh, to upgrade this to VMware Workstation 11. Um, so, I'm going to be using this for all of the Windows beta slash final release uh, build tutorials from now on. Um, but you can, of course, just like always, use you know any virtual machine software that you have. Um, or you can even do this on a real computer. So uh, let's just get right into it. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to open up whatever virtual machine software that you want to use, and then you want to create a new virtual machine. And here in VMware 11, we do still have the same uh, two typical and the uh, custom advanced options. Um, I would just, uh, if you're using VMware Workstation, I would just recommend selecting the typical option, as this usually makes it uh, a lot easier or you know more simpler later on so I'm just gonna do that and you wanna select I will install the operating system later and this is just so that the virtual machine is gonna be created with a blank hard disk and you're just going, you're just going to want to click on next and for the guest operating system you're obviously going to want to set it as Microsoft Windows and the version as Windows 2000 professional click on next and then you want to give it a name I think I already have a virtual machine named Windows 2000 so I'm just going to call this, uh, how about Win2K, and we'll click on Next, and I just like to store it as a single file. It does say here that you know if you want to uh, move this to like another computer, if you wanted to do something like that, um, you would probably want to uh, select the split virtual disk option. But you know usually this one is you know, uh, you know perfectly fine for me. Um, and for the recommended disk size, I would uh, recommend choosing eight gigabytes um, or whatever other default uh, that your virtual machine software gives you. Um, I don't think we're gonna need that much space to install Windows 2000, uh, but we will see here in a minute. So we're just going to want to click on next and click on customize hardware. And so all of the memory and the processor settings uh, should be you know, pretty much okay. Um, 256 megabytes is uh, plenty of RAM uh, for Windows 2000 to work with. If you wanted to, you could of course give it uh, some more RAM if you wanted to. Uh, and of course, one processor is you know, usually uh, you know, pretty good. So now what you wanna do is you're gonna to want to go down to the new CD slash DVD drive, and you wanna click on use ISO image file, and just like always, you're going to want to browse to the ISO file that you downloaded. And again, that link is going to be down below in the video description uh, if you have not downloaded it yet. And once you uh, have your ISO file put in here, you're just, going, you're just going to want to click on close and finish. And it's going to pop up with a new virtual machine um, with whatever name that you named it. So uh, since this is a final release version of Windows, we're not going to have to... Um, you know set the date back or you know do anything like that all I have to do is just click on power on um, and let it do its thing it's going to go through um, as you'll see here uh, in in a minute yeah see right here it's, it's going to be going through um, a pretty familiar Windows 2000 setup um, so as I you know as it's doing this uh, I just figured I would uh, you know kind of uh, talk a little bit about the history um, of Windows 2000. This was released 15 years ago on December 15th, 1999, and this was the last version um, of Windows that uh, had um, a separate home edition and a separate uh, professional edition, uh, being this would be Windows 2000, the professional version, and Windows Me would be uh, the home version, but it looked very similar to Windows 2000. Uh, it, it wasn't until Windows XP where they, you know, thought of just, you know, bringing both the home and the professional, uh, you know, two separate editions into just one single operating system. Um, so yeah, here we go. Here we go um, with the disk selection screen. Basically, what we have to do here is uh, just press Enter on this unpartitioned space, and you, I would highly recommend doing the NTFS file system. 
as uh, you know, the NTFS file system is uh, much more secure and stable uh, than the FAT32 file system, which I believe that I mentioned that in uh, my Windows NT4 video, as you know, basically every version of Windows NT uses the NTFS file system. So it's almost done here copying the files over from the Windows installation folders. Um, and once it finishes doing this, it should ask us if it, um, or to restart the computer. So you just want to press enter and it's going to restart the virtual machine. Um, and we will be uh, going through the Windows 2000 setup here. So we're just going to uh, let it do its you know, first boot. All right, so we're just uh, a little bit later into the installation. It, it is now um, detecting all of the hardware devices that are on the virtual machine. So uh, this usually doesn't take too long. It does say that you know, your screen may flicker for a few seconds and uh, so, you know, if you like notice that, uh, don't you know, think, think anything's uh, wrong, that is normal. Um, this could, of course, take longer if you're on a real computer because you, uh, it's going to have to find um, all of your like actual hardware devices. It's obviously going to be uh, much quicker when everything's virtualized. So um, it does look like it's uh, kind of uh, paused in the middle here. We're just going to have to wait for it and uh, hopefully it will finish up here. All right, so that did take a little bit longer than I thought it was going to, but uh, it did finish up here. Uh, it took uh, around two minutes for it to finish, but um, yeah, so now it's going to ask us to choose uh, the system locale and the keyboard layout, which both of these uh, are fine for me. If you want to change these, this is the time to do it. And once you have that all configured, you just want to click on next and uh, you want to type in your name and your con uh, or your organization if you have one and just uh, click on next. I should probably also mention that uh, this ISO file um, has been patched so that you don't need to put in uh, any product key and I'm not sure who patched it. Um, if I did, I obviously would you know give credit to them, but um, yeah, you, you don't have to worry about entering a, like, uh, like any product key or anything like that. So um, I'm just going to call this uh, win2kvm and I'm not going to bother putting in an admin password right now. And we're going to choose, we are in, let's find, uh, it's always on Pacific time. We want to go to Eastern time, US and Canada. And that looks perfectly fine. So we're just going to uh, check automatically adjust the clock. And it's going to now install the networking components. And uh, once it does this, we, um, I'm actually not sure what it does yet. It's been a while since, since I've done a Windows 2000 installation. Um, but uh, it is almost about halfway. Oh, okay, there it is. It's, it's all done. Uh, so let's just uh, wait for the next screen to pop up here. And it's going to ask you if you are a part of a work group or a computer domain. So I'm just going to choose, no, this computer is not on a network or it is in a network without a domain. Um, and you have to type in uh, a work group. So I'll just do work group. I think that's uh, the default you know, name anyway. Um, so you just want to click on next and now it is going to, oh, so yeah, now it actually has to uh, install all of the components and copy the files over. So, um, and it does say that uh, this may take uh, several minutes and, you know, it, you know, seems like it's going pretty fast here. Again, as I always say, if you're doing this uh, on a, you know, real machine, uh, your times may vary, but uh, it seems to be going pretty fast here. And now it is um, going to be installing the start menu items, registering the components, saving settings, and removing any temporary files that it uses. Um, so I'm just going to let it do that here. And now it says that Windows 2000 has been installed successfully. So we just have to click on the restart now button, um, or you could wait out uh, the 15 seconds if you, you know, absolutely wanted to. Um, and now it is going to do its, uh, you know, first boot procedure. This usually takes uh, a little bit longer than uh, usual as it's going to have to, you know, do um, all of that first boot stuff. Um, but yeah, we are looking at a fully, you know, working copy of Windows 2000 here. And yeah, as I mentioned, uh, you know, there's no product key or, you know, anything like that. Um, and since this is uh, considered abandoned where I will be able to, uh, you know, put that link down below. Um, but it is kind of nice that you don't have to worry about, you know, like having a, you know, any product keys or whatever. But uh, so this uh, should be starting up here. I guess we, we're not going to have to do anything else. It's just going uh, to ask us to log in. 
So it's going to you know do all the stuff that it usually does. I mean, I'm sure most of you that have you know used uh, even Windows XP, uh, you may have seen uh, this same style login box. But we're just going to log into the um, administrator account, and, and you see that um, we do have sound working by default uh, in VMware, which is very nice. So. We're just going to let it uh, set up the desktop, and it's going to find all the new hardware. So, uh, yeah, here we are. We um, are in Windows 2000. We have uh, the getting started with Windows with Windows 2000 screen open. I'm just going to um, uncheck this uh, like little box under that says "Show this screen at startup." As uh, I'm sure we don't want that to you know start up every single time. Um, and yeah, here we are in Windows 2000. Um, if you've you know, uh, never seen Windows 2000, uh, this is it. Um, and yeah, so you know we can you know do things. I'm actually just going to run a Winver command here just to show you what what that looks like. Um, yeah, here it is. Uh, uh, Microsoft Windows version 5.0 uh, Service Pack 4. Which yeah, by the way, this is um, uh, this ISO is for uh, the latest release of Windows 2000, which is Service Pack 4, build 2195. And it has a copyright date of 1981 to 1999. Um, so I guess while we're here, uh, we can take a look at how to install VMware tools, um, as that is usually kind of helpful uh, with you know getting uh, the screen re the screen resolution made bigger uh, and you know things like that. It also allows uh, for more compatibility. So uh, if you're in VMware, all you have to do is uh, press Control Alt uh, to get your mouse out of the virtual machine. And you want to go up to the very top menu and press VM and install VMware tools. And I think every virtual machine software has uh, some type of software similar to this. Uh, VMware has VMware tools. I think Virtual PC has uh, the Virtual PC editions. And uh, I think um, Oracle VirtualBox has the uh, VirtualBox guest editions, I think is uh, what they're called. But they all basically do the same thing. They uh, like install uh, their own custom drivers uh, into the virtual machine so you know make it work better. So as it turns out, VMware Tools actually fails uh, with this Microsoft Runtime DLL error. So what I've actually um, figured out that what we have to do is we have to uh, install an update rollout uh, for Windows 2000 uh, Service Pack 4. So um, I'm going to also have that link placed down below in the video description. And basically what it is, is uh, it is an ISO file that I made um, from the uh, official Microsoft updates rollout for this because obviously there's no way of getting uh, the exe file into this virtual machine without using um, an ISO file. So um, what you're going to want to do is uh, get your mouse out of the virtual machine and go up to where it says VM removable devices CD slash DVD and then settings and you're going to want to uh, uh, click on browse and then change it uh, to that ISO file and that link is, is again going to be down below. Now once you do that um, you just want to uh, get rid of this error message here and you want to go back to my computer and we just, I think we have to press F5 to refresh okay here it is right here so you just want to obviously double click on this and then um, open this file right here and it's going to begin uh, extracting all the files um, and yeah this is as I mentioned it is uh, the update rollout uh, one for Windows 2000 service pack 4 so we just want to uh, you know kinda go through this agree to the license terms and let it uh, install these updates and this uh, from what I'm reading online should fix that error um, it's probably going to ask us to do a system restart so we'll have to see so here it, uh, it has just finished um, the installation of that. Um, it didn't take that long. It took you know longer than I thought it was going to. But um, now it's finished. So you're going to want to uh, click on the finish button. It's going to restart the virtual machine. Um, and when it boots back up, we should be able to uh, install VMware tools. And that's going to make this uh, look a lot nicer as we can actually get a full 1080p resolution. So um, just going to boot back up here. So we're back here at the login screen. We're just going to log into the administrator account again. And we should now be able to uh, install VMware tools. So um, again, you're going to want to go up uh, to the top uh, to where it says VM and install VMware tools. So we do have to go uh, into to my computer. Oh, actually we don't. It's just going uh, to auto start for us. Um, but yeah, so you see now uh, it doesn't crash and 
uh, we can go through uh, the installation normally. So we're just going to have to uh, click on next. I'm going to go uh, with the complete option just so we can get everything uh, and just click on next again and click on install. It's going to uh, install all of the VMware drivers. Um, it actually is going by pretty fast. Uh, so, uh, oh, okay. So now, so now it's going to have to copy all the new files and um, yeah, so once this finishes, uh, after one more restart, we should be able uh, to get everything working very nicely. So, uh, I'm just going to let this finish up here. Alright, we're back. The installation has finished, and you can already see uh, how much better uh, that the whole virtual machine looks. We are now running uh, at full color. Um, all we have to do is uh, click on the finish button, and click on yes to uh, do one more restart. And yeah, after this, uh, I am going to, to make the virtual machine full screen um, just so that uh, it will auto fit uh, into the 1920 by 1080 resolution. So uh, yeah, we're just going to have to uh, let it boot up one more time and we'll see how that looks. All right, so here we are at the login screen. We're going to once again log into the administrator account. And yeah, so here we are in Windows 2000 running at full 1080p. Um, with full color. So and just to show you, uh, I'll go into the properties and we'll see um, We are using uh, true color 32-bit as opposed uh, to high color 16-bit and we're at 1920 by 1080 so uh, Yeah, if you um, ever, ever been wondering um, how you can do that or why you get uh, that like weird um, Error message um, at the beginning. Um, it's pretty much because uh, that that update rollout is not installed. So um, hopefully uh, that will fix that up for you guys and yeah, guys, I think that is just going to about wrap it up for this video. Um, again, I would like to thank Heath and Mega Man Fan Kid Tech uh, for suggesting this video. And if you guys have any um, video ideas of your own, definitely sure to leave them down in the comments as I always enjoy uh, reading what you guys have to say. And guys, if this helped you in any way, definitely sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.